Night creatures who crave for human flesh is a popular ideology prevail in literature related to horror. Of the many monsters, a more widespread supernatural beast that lurk in the shadows at night is the werewolf. A human shape shift into a savage wolf who has no control over his desire for flesh. Even though at present, the beast is more or less seen as a creation of fantasy fiction, many mythologies such as Greek, Roman, Japanese and more believe the creature to be so real and absolutely deadly. Also it could be seen, the werewolf, or at least similar night creatures, appearing in mythologies regardless of their place of origin. Before humans were civilized, we were just as same as animals, driven by the survival instincts. So even after proclaiming ourselves superior and civilized than animals, we still have those primitive instincts, which we buried and tried to tame out within ourselves. This could be seen as the basic standpoint of the concept of werewolves in every mythology, which is the belief of a possibility to revert back to our savage ways under special circumstances. The word werewolf comes from the Old English word werewolf. This word is made up of two components, were and wolf. Were means man and wolf means wolf. So to sum up the word, werewolf means man-wolf. The Greek historian Herodotus describes about a tribe called the Nuri, or Navari, where he further explains that once a year, each of the Nuri became a wolf for a few days before returning to their human form. This tale was also mentioned by Pomponius Mela, who is a Roman geographer. According to the Greek geographer Pausanias, the first werewolf to walk on earth is Lycaon. He was the king of Arcadia, but known to be ruthless and notorious. He amused himself by torturing the innocents. The king was so wicked that the king of gods Zeus himself decided to intervene. Zeus transformed himself as a common man and visited the king. Those who recognized the common man as the king of gods warned Lycaon of it. But Lycaon refused to believe the commoner was a god and decided to test Zeus. So he served the god a lavish meal in which he has secretly mixed the flesh of a Molossian hostage. Disgusted, the god turned Lycaon into a wolf so he could pursue his craving for human flesh. In some variations of the story, it was mentioned that it was not a Molossian hostage, but his youngest son Nyctimus. In these tales, Zeus not only transformed Lycaon into a wolf, but also killed all his children. Nyctimus, though, was restored back to life. It is from Lycaon's name the word lycanthrope, which was referred to werewolves in the early text has been derived. Lycaon became the first werewolf in existence and also was regarded as the king of all werewolves. He is said to possess immense strength and even regarded as the strongest werewolf to ever live. Some even state that Lycaon is immortal and still lurk in the shadows. At times the earth was in a low vibrational state, Lycaon would emerge from his hideout with his fellow werewolves. Pausanias further extends the story by narrating how the victorious Olympic boxer, Demarcus, once turned into a werewolf. Demarcus is said to have changed his shape into that of a wolf at the festival of Lycia. The festival involved human sacrifice to Zeus. Once a young boy was killed in the festival as a sacrifice, and Demarcus, who took part in the festival, accidentally consumed the sacrifice. Zeus, who saw this act, transformed him into a wolf. But unlike other werewolves, Demarcus refrained from eating human flesh. So after 10 years, Zeus transformed him back to his human form. From this story it was believed that if a werewolf refrained from eating human flesh for 9 years, the gods will turn the werewolf back to its human form on the 10th year. If however, the wolf tasted the flesh of a man, he would remain a beast forever. Virgil, who is a Roman poet, also talks about a man named Morris in his poetic work Eclogues. 
In it, he describes that the man used herbs and poisons picked in his native Pontus to turn himself into a wolf. Through this poem, emerged the belief that a person could be transformed into a wolf through witchcraft, and not necessarily by a god, and the idea of special herbs transforming someone into a werewolf began to spread. Virgil doesn't clearly specify whether Moeris himself caused the transformation, or someone else is responsible for poisoning him. But later it was stated that the combination of herbs specified by Vigil is poisonous and cause hallucinations. These hallucinations made Moeris think he was changing into a wolf. Once the poison wears off, Moeris has returned to its normal state. Majority of the werewolf stories are connected with the full moon. This is because there is a belief that full moon creates madness in people, which in turn would awaken the hidden self within. Resultantly, it makes the perfect context to associate the transformation of a man into a wolf in the presence of a full moon. The earliest accounts of this association could be found in the prose, the Satyricon, written by Petronius Arbiter. Petronius talks about a character named Nysros. One night Nysros set off to meet his lover. He asked his friend to accompany him on the journey and coincidentally it was a full moon day. When the full moon light shone upon his friend, Nysros witnessed his friend changing into a wolf. He describes the incident as, when I look for my buddy, I see he'd stripped and piled his clothes by the roadside. He pees in a circle round his clothes and then, just like that, turns into a wolf. After he turned into a wolf, he started howling and then ran off into the woods. Frightened by what he just witnessed, Nysros ran off to his lover's house. There he was informed that a huge wolf attacked the village but the people fought him off. In the fight, the wolf was a given a severe wound to the throat. The next day, Nysros found his friend transformed back into the human form with a severe cut near his throat. This story added two more theories to the myths of werewolves. Those are, the moon is associated with the transformation, and if you were wounded as a wolf, even after you transform back into the human form, the wound stays with you. Even though it was believed that witchcraft is responsible for the werewolves, many tend to believe that werewolves are a tribe and pass on the werewolf gene through generations. Wolves are also very aggressive and dangerous animals, and so the transformation is greatly associated with the adrenaline flow. So it was believed that anger, puberty, could stimulate the transformation. Those who carry the werewolf blood is said to be more aggressive than others, and this could be clearly seen during the time of puberty. The werewolves who goes through puberty are said to be most violent. Because puberty itself causes more adrenaline flow, it makes them more radical than the rest. The offspring of two werewolves would surely give birth to a werewolf baby, and is referred to as a pubreed. In cases where a normal human is the parent, the offspring is a half-breed. A normal woman will not survive giving birth to a werewolf child. In many occurrences, it is said that werewolves tend to live as packs. In this pack there exists a hierarchy. The strongest, fastest and the most powerful werewolf is called the Alpha. He is the leader of the pack. An Alpha is the most ferocious, but does have a great sense of control. He would not need a stimulant to change into the wolf form, and even in the wolf form, an Alpha has a great sense of control. In wolf form, an Alpha is considerably bigger than other werewolves. The easiest way for a werewolf to become an Alpha is by killing another Alpha and taking over the pack. Once turned into an Alpha, the werewolf gets the power to absorb the energy of every werewolf it kills and grows bigger and powerful. But to become a true Alpha, a werewolf should rise purely through strength of character, virtue, or the sheer force of his own. Such Alphas are very rare, and they would not kill other werewolves to please themselves and to gain more power, even though they could. The only reason they kill another werewolf is out of necessity. 
So true alphas are greatly respected and even worshipped by other werewolves. A beta werewolf has a group of other werewolves backing him up. They are more social than an alpha. Betas could be considered more of as super soldiers. Because the werewolf has a group backing him up, as a pack, a beta werewolf is very strong. Deltas also could be considered as soldiers in the pack. But they are less powerful than betas and smaller in size. Gammas are the lowest forms, and are considered the hunters and scouts of the pack. Omegas are the werewolves without a pack. These lone wolves are more threatening because they are very strong and has no one controlling them. Omegas are lone wolves either by choice or because they were thrown out of the pack by the Alpha. So they are often placed at the bottom of the hierarchy. The young adults or newly turned werewolves should earn their place in the wolf hierarchy or else they get outcast. Werewolves are said to possess many powers and abilities. These powers are at their peak during the time under a full moon. Although other causes of transformation such as anger could enhance these powers, they are temporary and wouldn't attain their maximum enhancement. Even in human form, a person with a werewolf blood has these powers and abilities. Of the many, werewolves are said to possess supernatural strength. They could easily lift thousands of pounds. Their strength get weaker when transformed into the human form. Even so, they are way too stronger than an average muscular human. Werewolves can run at a very high speed. When they are at their maximum speed, they become almost invisible to the naked eye. They can keep up with this speed for a very long time because werewolves don't easily get tired. They also have a very good sense of sight, smell, and hearing, similar to those of an actual wolf. Their sight extend up to the infrared spectrum so they could easily see in the dark because they have the ability to detect heat. Werewolves have an extremely high recovery rate. They are also said to have the power to absorb the pain of another creature and heal. Werewolves in the same pack can communicate through thoughts while in their wolf form. This ability is called telepathy. The Alpha Wolf is said to send messages and orders to his pack through telepathy, so in most cases, the Alpha could always be seen in his wolf form than in his human form. The greatest weakness of a werewolf is silver. Even though firearms and blades can't harm a werewolf, if it made up in silver, such weapons could easily kill them. Some even state that even by touch of silver could cause them severe burns. Being a descendant of the werewolf bloodline is not the only way of being a werewolf, even though it is the most prominent and recognized way. Witchcraft, special herbs can also turn a person into a werewolf. Wearing the skin of a wolf is also believed to be a way to become a werewolf. Drinking rainwater out of the footprint of the animal or from certain enchanted streams were also considered effectual when turning into a werewolf. In Italy, France, and Germany, it was said that a man or woman could turn into a werewolf if he or she, on a certain Wednesday or Friday, slept outside on a summer night with the full moon shining directly on his or her face. Another way to become a werewolf is by being attacked by the beast. If the beast leaves a wound, that will infect the person and turn him into a werewolf. There is a lot of debate as to how the myth was originally created, but could be seen that belief in werewolves developed drastically in parallel to the belief in witches. Under the influence of the church, just as witches, werewolves were viewed as sinners and has been touched by the devil himself. So in a similar way to witchcraft trials, werewolf trials also emerged during this time. In the 16th century, about 30,000 people in France stood accused of being werewolves. Common signs that were thought to be of a werewolf are eyebrows that meet together, hair growing on their palms, or overly rough palms, disagreeable behavior, cursing the church, etc. People who were recognized as werewolves were tortured by pouring burning oil on them and forced to confess. 
Once they did, the suspected werewolves were burned alive at the stake. So most of the people tend to live in isolation. Many were killed, including both men and women. In 1692 in Jürgensburg, an 80-year-old man named Thies stood accused of being a werewolf. He confessed to be a werewolf and testified under oath that he and other werewolves were the hounds of God. He claimed they were warriors who descended into hell to battle witches and demons. So he insisted that when werewolves die, their souls were welcomed into heaven as reward for their service. Thies was ultimately sentenced to 10 lashes for having superstitious beliefs and for influencing others by his ideology. There was a common belief among Greeks that the corpses of werewolves, if not destroyed, would return to life in the form of wolves or hyenas. Such wolves and hyenas would roam around battlefields and drink off blood from dying soldiers. There is also another belief in some parts of Germany, Poland and northern France, that people who died in mortal sin came back to life as blood-drinking wolves. Such werewolves would be awakened in the night and would return to their human corpse form at daylight. In such cases, the head-suspected dead body would be thrown into a stream after performing a special exorcism by the parish priest. Just as the ability to turn into a werewolf, old texts talk about ways of how to cure the werewolf curse. The ancient Greeks and Romans believed in the power of exhaustion in curing people of turning into werewolves. The suspected person would be subjected to long periods of physical activity. By doing so, the werewolf spirit that has been induced into the human will feel the fatigue and leave the body. A Sicilian belief of Arabic origin holds that a werewolf can be cured of its ailment by striking it on the forehead or scalp with a knife. Another way is to pierce the hand of the werewolf with nails. The more religious ways to cure a werewolf is by simply addressing the person who is thought to be a werewolf three times by its Christian name. According to a Danish belief, just scolding a werewolf in the name of God will cure it. Conversion to Christianity is also another method to get cured from being a werewolf. At present, we can see this mythological creature has been more romanticized than it was before. But even so, there are those who strongly believe in the existence of werewolves and believe the sight of a wolf to be ominous. Such groups even argue that wolves should be eradicated from existence. Regardless of the belief, it is commonly seen that the negative and darker aspects of human desires to be compared to the wolf than any other animal. Yet the fascinating aspects of the animal has gained the werewolf considerable popularity, even at present time. What do you think of the story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. My Patreon and subscribers, thank you so much for your amazing support. If haven't already, would very much appreciate if you could help out the channel by being a Patreon and a subscriber. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again in another story to tell.